Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live on November 14th from the studios of WMNF Tampa. This hour, we're going to talk about health insurance. Open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace began on November 1st, and it ends in mid-January. Today, we're going to talk about how you can get help from a navigator to choose the Obamacare plan that's best for you and to find out if you're eligible for financial assistance. We're also going to take your questions. So if you'd like to give me a call, it's 813-239-9663. You can also email your questions or your comments to dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. And joining me right now by Zoom to talk about all of this is Katie Roders Turner. She's executive director of Family Healthcare Foundation. Welcome back to Tuesday Cafe, Katie. Thank you so much for having me. It's always such a great opportunity to be on your show. I was excited excited to see you. Yeah, I'm glad that you could come on because it's a I think it's a service to our audience and to the people in the area because uh, one of the, you know, one of the things you have to worry about uh, is the cost of health insurance and this is really a good way for people to find out what works best for them. We're going to talk all about that this hour about how to find the best, the best cost insurance company, the, the best cost insurance policies that will work for you when you're uh, trying to make those decisions. And right now is about the time of year to do that. So why don't you begin, Katie, by telling us what is the Family Healthcare Foundation? I, absolutely. So the Family Healthcare Foundation is a nonprofit in Tampa Bay, and we're celebrating our 25th year this year. And our vision is that every person in Tampa Bay has equitable access to affordable, quality health care to ensure that we have a healthy, vibrant community. And we do that through the work of our navigators. Uh, we're generously funded by University of South Florida's College of Public Health, the Children's Board of Hillsborough County, uh, Hillsborough County Healthcare Services, Florida Healthy Kids, and uh, Polk County Board of County Commissioners to ensure that we're providing free services for everyone that we work with and that those services are always confidential and unbiased to help make sure people are getting access to affordable healthcare coverage. And you mentioned healthcare navigators. That's something we're going to talk about on this show. So what is a healthcare na navigator and what, what kinds of things do they do? So healthcare navigators are highly trained individuals uh, who provide unbiased one-on-one -on -one assistance with identifying healthcare coverage options that may be on the health insurance marketplace. It could be through Florida Kid Care. It could be a local county program that provides a safety net. They'll help people fill out applications for whatever program they choose and then help them understand what their coverage is. So talking through what a deductible is, a co-payment, comparing plans side by side, helping people find doctors or other specialists as well. And if people want to get in touch with one of these navigators, you, they, can, you, they can reach you by phone or by your website. What are those? Absolutely. Thank you. So they can find us at 813-995-7005, or they can go to our website, which is familyhealthcarefdn.org. And in addition to the 22 navigators at the Family Healthcare Foundation, we are joined by Baycare Health System, Tampa General Hospital, Premier Community Healthcare, and Evra Health to have 35 navigators trained and ready to help people across Tampa Bay. And if you missed either that website or that phone number, you can find it on our website, wmnf.org. We have an article there that has those, or you can go back and find that later this afternoon, or you can... Uh, watch watch the video again of this interview, whatever, if you miss any of this information. But uh, you might have want to have a pen ready during this hour as well. And again, if you have questions, if you're listening live on November 14th, I welcome you to call in at 813-239-9663. You can email your question or comment WM at dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. Our guest is Katie Roders Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation, and we're talking about the open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace. And this is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're broadcasting live on November 14th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. So, what is open enrollment? I said at the beginning that it started on November 1st and it ends on January 15th. What does that mean? 
So open enrollment is the time of year that people can go to the health insurance marketplace, update their application or income, or apply for new coverage that will get them health insurance for 2024. So right now, if people enroll before December 15th, that health insurance coverage will begin on January 1st. We recently heard that the open enrollment period will go until January 16th um, of this year, which is a little different, but that lets people who didn't have a chance to get that December 15th deadline still the opportunity to enroll in coverage for 2024 as well. So this is the time of year to go in, shop, compare your plans, make sure your information is accurate so you're getting access to all the financial assistance you may qualify for to ensure that your health insurance is as affordable as possible. What kind of information might people want to gather before they talk to a navigator? So if they do have an application on file with healthcare.gov, having a username and password available is going to be really helpful to get into your application as quickly as possible. Your accurate information for 2024, 2023 and or your projected household income for 2024, as well as your household size and the names of the individuals that you need to get covered in your family. And then also, if there are medical issues that you want to discuss during your appointment to make sure that the plans you're comparing um, provide accurate out-of-pocket expense information, you may want to share that during the appointment as well so we can review the cost of things like prescription drugs too. But it's not required. It is just something we can help with. Who is eligible for the marketplace, the health insurance marketplace under the Affordable Care Act, and who's eligible for subsidies in, in that marketplace? So here in the state of Florida, we use uh, the federal government's uh, platform, which is healthcare.gov. Um, so we'll be looking at Florida-based plans. Um, people are able to go into the marketplace and look at the options available to them. Um, generally, there's a wide range of um, eligibility criteria, but for the subsidies, for it's going to be based on income for the household. So it'll be for households that are above 100% of the federal poverty level. Um, even those of moderate or higher income up to or even a little bit beyond 400% of the federal poverty level may qualify for subsidies as well. And while we're working with anyone who's looking at the marketplace, if there are other options like Florida Kid Care or a county-based program that are going to help them provide ac um, affordable coverage for themselves or their families, we'll share that information too. County-based programs like one here in Hillsboro, uh, is that's actually really good for people, especially uh, people who have lower incomes. That's correct. So Hillsborough County has a wonderful program, the health, uh, Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan, that offers no-cost coverage for Hillsborough County residents up to 175% of the federal poverty level. Um, it it's a, gives them coverage uh, at medical homes, specialty care, prescription drugs, hospitalizations. It's a phenomenal program and will help people learn about that program as well and then fill out that application too. Our guest is Katie Roders Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation, and we're talking about the open enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act's Health Insurance Marketplace. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live on November 14th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And if you'd like to tell us about your story, if you've been in the marketplace, if you've gotten uh, Affordable Care Act coverage and you have a story to tell, whether it's good or bad, we want to hear that. Or especially if you have questions about um, maybe you've had tried it in the past and you've got, gotten to some stumbling blocks or you're trying now and you're having difficulty, or if you have never tried it and you have some questions about how to get started, that'd be a great time to give us a call. 813-239-9663. Of course, you can also email us at dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. I imagine if you put your county in the email or text, that would be helpful information for us as well. So, uh, Katie, what kind of, you mentioned some of the plans. I know that we've heard levels like bronze and silver and so forth. What what kinds of plans are available and, um, you know, what would be the difference between those levels? That's a great question. So a little bit more about plan information. In uh, Tampa Bay, we actually have seven insurance carriers that are on healthcare.gov. Um, and some of those are names that you may very well re uh, recognize too. So there's some big carrier names in there. Um, and then of those insurance carriers, 
there's about 160 plans that people could possibly choose from. Um, so it's a lot of wonderful options, um, but we also recognize that might be a lot to look at, which is why navigators are really helpful in comparing plans and prioritizing what your health needs are when choosing health insurance. There are um, metal tiers that plans are divided into. Um, so bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And those are really referring to what someone's out-of-pocket expenses may be or how much they're going to be paying in healthcare costs throughout the year. Bronze plans will have the lower premium. Platinum may have the higher premium, but then the out-of-pocket expenses may be lower. So if someone's a high utilizer of healthcare needs, they may decide to go with a platinum plan that has a higher premium, but they know what their costs are gonna look like and be a little bit more lower throughout the year. What can you say about subsidies and how many people, you know, what percentage perhaps of people would qualify for subsidies and uh, how much it might end up costing people per month for one of these plans? It's a great question. So it really does depend on someone's household size and then their modified adjusted gross income that will be projected for 2024. And this is why we always say that it's really great to go back and look at the marketplace again, even if you decided not to enroll in years past. There may have been a change to your household size, a change to your income. You may have access to new financial assistance. There was an expansion to financial assistance as well in 2021 that's going to continue through 2024. And so we're just encouraging everybody to go back and look again um, because it really will depend on your individual household size. And that's for people who didn't enroll last time, and they might go back and check and find out that they're eligible for more for more funding, perhaps. But you're also encouraging people who are already enrolled in the Affordable Care Act marketplace to look at the, the plans anyway, because there might be something that uh, is even better for you this year. Absolutely. So highly encourage everybody to actively complete their renewal. Now, if someone does not, and they're already enrolled in the marketplace, they are going to get auto renewed into a plan. Um, CMS is actually looking at um, making sure that people are in plans that are going to provide the lowest out of pocket expenses this year, which is wonderful. But still, to make sure that your information is accurate in your application, we're encouraging everyone to actively renew their information to make sure their health insurance is the right one for them in 2024. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and our guest is Katie Roders turner Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. And we're talking about the open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace we're broadcasting live on November 14th, and you can call us if you have a question or if you have something that you'd like to share about your experience with the marketplace. You can call us at 813-239-9663. You can also email dj at wmnf.org. You can text us at 813-433-0885. So uh, more than a decade ago, this uh, Obamacare, uh, the Affordable Care Act was passed through the through Congress and signed into law. And so we've had these Affordable Care Act health insurance marketplace for a decade, and it'll be the 11th year this year of the, the marketplaces, but there are still some changes. And one of those is that because of inflation, unsubsidized premiums are rising, which might mean you you if you don't qualify for a subsidy, you might be paying more just because of the, the rising cost of health coverage. It's true. And unfortunately, that's happening across the board with health insurance. We've seen reports that employer-sponsored insurance is also possibly going to be going up in premiums in 2024. We've seen inflation in a lot of different categories, which is why, again, we're always encouraging everyone to update their income, come back again and look and see. If your information is up to date and accurate, there's a possibility you do qualify for subsidies, which would be wonderful in reducing the cost of health insurance in 2024. In addition, if you do have children and you're looking for coverage, there may be a very affordable option through Florida Kid Care, which would be a wonderful opportunity to review with the navigator as well. We'll share information about that as too and help you complete those applications. And we are we, we did get an email that I'll read in just a second, but I want to remind people that if you're listening live on November 14th, you can email us at dj at wmnf.org. You can text your comment or question to 813-433-0885. Or if you'd like to phone us with your question, Katie, be happy to answer it. Our number here is 813-239-9663. So Janet writes in and she says, 
I love my ACA bronze plan with Blue Cross. And she said she was able to keep the doctor she had for years through her work insurance. And she ends the email with, thanks, Obama. So this is someone who um, is has the ACA bronze plan, which you mentioned earlier, is the one that will probably have p- potentially the most out-of-pocket expenses throughout the year, even though at the, the premiums might be the lowest. And uh, this person writes in and says that she's happy with her plan. That's wonderful. And something to keep in mind, all of the plans on the marketplace, regardless of metal tier, still have to meet the standards of the Affordable Care Act. So they can't discriminate or not cover pre-existing conditions. Uh, Preventative services are still going to be totally free at in-network providers. So all of the plans will still offer a standard set of benefits, uh, 10 essential health benefits, actually. Um, And if someone is, you know, really happy with the bronze plan, then that's great because it means it's the right one from them. So that's awesome. So glad to hear that. And I should say that um, when we're on the subject of subsidies, the Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed by Congress, provided a t- provides a temporary enhancement of subsidies, and that makes up the vast majority of marketplace shoppers el- eligible for financial help. So how does that work? So even in addition to, um, in in general, over the years past, there have been subsidies for that people could have gotten based on their incomes and so forth to get help with paying for their health insurance. But the Inflation Reduction Act added a little bit more on top of that. It's true. So when that was passed, that was actually a real help with reducing the cost of health insurance by increasing subsidies available. And that's been helpful really in kind of um, preventing the costs of uh, marketplace coverage to go up despite the rising cost of in, um, inflation, unfortunately, that we're unfortunately seeing, which is you know what you saw earlier, what you mentioned earlier, Sean, that for those who are unsubsidized, we do see that coverage um, expense going up a little bit every year with the premiums. And on the on that subject of subsidies, there's a cap to how much that enrollees can can must spend on a benchmark silver plan premium as a share of their household income. I'm reading that from a a, a policy paper from KFF, the Healthcare Policy Research Group. So there's a cap on how much they can spend on a benchmark silver plan premium. That is true. Um, so there is a cap for how much, uh, the sub, uh, how much people are going to be spending on a benchmark silver plan premium. Um, so they will have to be sheltered from increases in the sticker price of the premium. So it's still always going to be based on the household size and the household income as well. So that's great because it's taking into account what people may actually have available to spend on healthcare coverage. Let's talk about how the size of the, uh, marketplace is increasing, the number of policies that it has, both across the country and here in Florida. Um, Last year, our current year, there are 15.7 million people who are enrolled, and that broke the record that was set in 2022, which broke the record that was set in 2021. And we anticipate more people across the country this year will, will sign up. Is that right? Correct. So uh, there was a couple of changes that happened this year in particular that we're expecting to really impact the high enrollment numbers for 2024 coverage. Um, During the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there was a a federal mandate to pause Medicaid redeterminations, and that was in 2020. So many people stayed in Medicaid for almost three years, um, which... uh, Each state then, and the state of Florida did so as well, um, created plans to start what's called Medicaid redeterminations, um, and that began this past spring. Um, So every month, uh, the uh, Department of Children and Families uh, is renewing or reviewing and then redetermining people's Medicaid eligibility. Um, Many people uh, may stay eligible, but quite a few are also going to be losing Medicaid coverage because they are no longer eligible based on criteria of the state of Florida. And so those individuals may be eligible for the marketplace um, and may be eligible for subsidies too. They could potentially also be eligible for subsidized Florida kid care or potentially the full pay program as well. Um, So we think that there's going to be a lot more people looking for health insurance for 2024 coverage based on potentially having lost Medicaid. And that loss of Medicaid is something that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. So we have a a 50 second or so story from the Associated Press about that. They're talking about some of the data today. And uh, we mentioned a moment ago, pardon me, 
that the enrollment across the country is going up, but it's also high in Florida. This current year, there are 3.1 Floridians who are signed up for the marketplace. And I'm also from this research group, KFF, I'm seeing that 97% of Floridians are qualify for advance payments of the premium tax credit. So that's almost everyone in Florida who has the marketplace gets gets this credit for advanced payments of the premium tax credit. Can you explain what that is for us? Sure. So of the people who do enroll in coverage on healthcare.gov, we see that most are eligible for financial assistance. Advanced premium tax credits is the financial assistance provided to um, those who qualify um, on healthcare.gov. And it's an immediate uh, the immediate ability to use financial assistance to reduce the cost of your premiums. So people aren't receiving that money directly every year, like perhaps you would via a tax return through a child care tax credit, um, but it's money that is paid to a health insurance carrier of your choice on your behalf to reduce your monthly premium. You do need to reconcile that information when you file your taxes. And so you'll receive a tax form from healthcare.gov if you're receiving subsidies that shows how much financial assistance you received. And another type of financial assistance if for people enrolled in the marketplace, and this applies to 62% of Floridians, so a pretty big majority, they have a cost share reduction. Is that what we've been calling a, premiums, uh, a premium reduction? That's actually different. It's a second form of assistance. So there's the premium assistance based on your household size, your household income, and that can be applied to any of the health insurance plans that you choose in any of those four categories, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And then for an additional subset of people uh, that could qualify for cost sharing reductions, and uh, that would be for plans that they enroll in through that silver category. And so if doing so, they could get lower deductibles, lower co-payments, lower cost insurance. So the out-of-pocket expenses when using your health insurance could go down. All right, we have someone in, who is emailing in and uh, prefers to be anonymous, and they say that uh, capital gains will cause a payback of premiums that the sale of real estate, stock, inheritance, or other taxable gains may increase your income, triggering a full payback of any subsidies that have been received. So um, this person is saying for that reason, private health insurance outside of healthcare.gov might be a better option if you're expecting a, a windfall or capital gains. I can appreciate that perspective. So the health insurance marketplace sub, uh, financial assistance does use the projected taxable income for a household. Um, and so with capital gains, of course, you know that can, may, may be difficult to predict if someone's eligible for financial assistance on healthcare.gov and they believe that may be a possibility, we always encourage them to check in with a CPA, a tax advisors, because navigators cannot provide any tax information or tax advice. There is the ability on healthcare.gov to not accept the full amount of financial assistance if you believe your income will be variable. Um, you still could get access to things like those cost sharing reductions if you qualify for them. Um, and then it gives you a buffer as well to ensure that at tax time, your information can be reconciled without any penalty payback. Um, it is true that if someone's taxable income at the end of the year um, does not reflect what they projected in their application, there may be a payback possibility. Um, and that is tiered based on where the income ends up at the end of the tax year. Well, thank you for that email from Anonymous out there. And if you are listening live on November 14th and you'd like to email in your question or your experience with healthcare.gov, it's dj at wmnf.org. You can also text 813-433-0885. Or if you have a question for Katie, you can give us a call right now at 813-239-9663. Our guest is Katie Roters turner Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation, and we're talking about the open enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. So going back to Medicaid, during the pandemic, state Medicaid programs suspended annual requirements for Medicaid, and they kept everyone continually enrolled. But now states are resuming renewal requirements and it will, will end Medicaid coverage if people are no longer eligible or if they don't complete renewal forms. So this is called, um, they won't be renewed for procedural reasons. 
Nine and a half million adults and children have been disenrolled from Medicaid and from CHIP, so people may be eligible for marketplace subsidies if they've been kicked off of these other health care programs. It's true. So if they're no longer eligible for Medicaid coverage based on income and household size, there's a possibility they could be eligible for subsidies on the health insurance marketplace. When getting disenrolled or when getting redetermined, people may find that they're receiving letters saying that they get medically needy share of cost. Um, that would definitely be an opportunity to go look at healthcare.gov to see if you qualify for subsidies um, because that medically needy share of cost is not health insurance. Um, it is a bit of a safety net program for people who are over income for Medicaid eligibility, and it is quite likely that they could be eligible for some form of other health insurance program. It could be healthcare.gov and subsidies. Again, there may be a wonderful county-based program like Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan or Polk County Healthcare Plan, but there could be another uh, program that we'd like to share with them to make sure they get access to affordable healthcare coverage. And staying on the subject for a moment of people losing their Medicaid, Error, uh, this is according to the Associated Press. They found that error-ridden state reviews have purged millions of the poorest Americans from the Medicaid program in recent months. I'd like to take a listen to this very short story from Jennifer King, who reports that poverty experts are questioning if the Biden administration is doing enough to stop states from wrongly removing people from the government health care program. Here's that story from Jennifer King, and we'll be right back in a moment to, to talk with Katie Roeders Turner even more as millions of the poorest Americans are purged from Medicaid rolls. It's a story the Associated Press reported on back in August when the Department of Health and Human Services announced that in 29 states, entire families, including children, were getting wrongly kicked off of Medicaid. Estimates show that millions of recipients have been wrongly removed from the program in recent months due to state reevaluations that are plagued with errors and poor service. The health consulting firm Avalier estimates that as many as 30 million of the 94 million enrollees could be dropped as states finish their reviews this year. Advocates interviewed by the AP say people have lost coverage in states like Arkansas, Florida, North Carolina, and Texas due to problems like notices not reaching people, confusing incorrect government forms, website outages, and phone lines with hours-long wait times. HHS has the power to stop states from disenrolling people, but has shared little about problems it has uncovered. Jennifer King, Washington. Well, that's a story from Jennifer King from the Associated Press about how they found that error-ridden state reviews have purged millions of the poorest Americans from the Medicaid program in recent months. And the reason I play that here isn't necessarily, you know, we're not going to in this program, not going to influence the HHS to, to go and fix that whole problem. But what I would like to say is if you are someone who has been kicked off the Medicaid rolls. And I, I know we've said this already during this, this interview, but this is another opportunity for me to ask Katie, what can people do if they found themselves, they used to have Medicaid, but now the, the state is saying they're no longer eligible. What are their options? So if eligibility has been redetermined and people are finding that they're no longer eligible for Medicaid based on their income or their household size. It's time to look at other programs and navigators at Family Healthcare Foundations or partners at BayCare, Tampa General, Premier, Evra Health would be more than happy to assist with that process. Um, there might be programs through the health insurance marketplace, subsidies through Florida Kid Care, through Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan or Polk Healthcare Plan. Um, but if someone's incorrectly determined as ineligible, we will also help people appeal that decision or resubmit an application to make sure that if they are supposed to be in Medicaid, then that's where they're going to end up. Um, it can be a little bit of a lengthy and complicated process right now. You know, most of that is due to the volume, high volume of people being redetermined this year. Um, and we understand it can be confusing. Um, so we'd be happy to screen people for whatever program they might be eligible for, help them fill out the application for that program, and then also help them overcome any barriers or roadblocks that are preventing them from getting enrolled. Our guest is Katie Roeders turner Executive Director of Family Health Care Foundation. We're talking about open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And we, uh, one thing I read is that there's a new option in the marketplace, and that's something called auto re-enrollment that could save people money on their deductibles. For example, uh, some people in a bronze plan will get re-enrolled in silver plans if they find that if if the the premium is the same or lower than the plan that they're already paying for. So tell us how that might work. 
Yeah, this is actually a really exciting innovation. Um, we've had auto enrollment for many, many years now, um, and that really helps with ensuring people's continuity of care, continuity of coverage. However, sometimes people may be looking at um, a zero dollar plan, which is a usually a bronze plan that pops up first on their screen. And just a few plans down, there's actually a silver plan that offers very low deductibles, co-payments, and it's also free or low cost. Um, and so what CMS has done through this innovation is evaluating people's plans to help them get re-enrolled and ensure continuity of health insurance, but also make sure that they're getting access to the lowest cost for affordable healthcare coverage when it comes to out-of-pocket expenses. So we're excited to see this. Because a lot of the subsidy depends on things like your income, you have to report that. You have to, to verify your income. But now, uh, this year, marketplace shoppers have extra time to submit proof of income. I think it used to be, gosh, was it was it 120 days and now they've extended it or something? Yes, exactly. So it did used to be a few months that they would need to, people would need to update their information for um, their income. Um, it's not for every single individual either. So usually people who have been in the marketplace for a while will have the ability to um, have the ability to um, not have to update their, uh, not provide proof of income if there hasn't been a very large change. Um, However, some people who are indicating a change in income or potentially are new to the marketplace and new to tax credits may be asked to update or provide proof of their income to verify why they're getting financial assistance. This year for 2024, individuals will have up to 150 days to provide that information, which is great because sometimes finding pay stubs, finding tax returns can be a burden. And so this is great that it helps people upload their information and not have any risk of losing that financial assistance. Another change that I'm hearing about is that uh, people up to the age of 26 can be on their parents' policy. And so young adults who are turning six, turning 26, that is, and their policy will continue through the end of the year that they turn 26. So it's not like it will abruptly get cut off right at, on their birthday. That's correct. That all does only apply to health insurance marketplace plans. So for employer-sponsored insurance, usually if you have a dependent who is turning 26, they will be coming off of their parents' coverage. Those individuals get what's called a special enrollment period. Uh, so those 26-year-olds can go look at the marketplace for coverage for themselves. And for those who are on a family plan um, in the marketplace, those 26-year-olds actually can stay on their parents' coverage through the end of the year until the next enrollment period. And then for those 26-year-olds who that happens to, then they're automatically enrolled in their own exchange coverage the following year? So we would probably encourage any of those individuals to look at their applications and they may then needing, be needing to sep uh, separate out and submit their own application for coverage. Um, and that would be because, you know, the household income might be changing, that individual may have a different type of job this year. So I don't know that I would encourage those individuals to automatically get re-enrolled just because the household size of household income might be different. Um, I'd be curious to see what this looks like in fall 2024. So I will uh, get back to you on that. We'll talk about that next year. Our guest is Katie Roters turner the Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. And this is the open enrollment period for Affordable Care Act's health insurance marketplace. So we're talking about that. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And we're broadcasting live on November 14th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And I want to hear what your experience has been like with the marketplace. Have you enrolled before? Are you getting the coverage that you expect and the, the costs that you are hoping for? Or are you are you having issues? And we can hopefully try to, to resolve some of those issues, perhaps, or at least uh, get kickstarted in that direction. If you give us a call, 813-239-9663. If you'd like to email us instead, it's dj at wmnf.org. Or you can text 813-433-0885. And please let us know the county that you're in if you text us or email us. So the um, we're this is the open enrollment period. And so that means that anyone can sign up if they're eligible. They can sign up during this period. Um, why don't you, this might be a good time before I get to my next question to remind me, right, remind us of what we talked about earlier about when does the open enrollment period close? So uh, open enrollment started on November 1st for the health insurance marketplace. 
We encourage people to make a decision if possible by December 15th um, so that their plan starts, that the one that they want by January 1st. Still, open enrollment will stay open through um, until uh, January 16th, which is a little different this year. Um, and so people actually have until January 16th to go in, shop for coverage, and make changes to their plans. And then at any point after that, throughout the year, if they have a qualifying life event, they can uh, potentially qualify for what's called a special enrollment period. And if there's ever changes to their income, they also can report that as well throughout the year. And uh, it used to be where the pandemic was uh, something that you could enroll in, enroll in um, the marketplace outside the open enrollment window, but that type of exception has, has ended. Correct. Usually the marketplace does have for natural disasters or major occurrences like a global pandemic, a special enrollment period specifically for that. Um, one that they have and will have is the Medicaid disenrollment um, window and special enrollment period. Um, so for those who are losing coverage uh, between March 31st of 2023 through July 31st of 2024, that's a special enrollment period as well if you've lost coverage within that period. So if that happens, then you can enroll pretty much any time. That's correct. So what you mentioned earlier, the number of insurers and plans that are in Florida, it seems like there's quite a lot. And it seems like not in Florida, Florida is kind of staying steady, but throughout the country, there are even more and more insurers that are entering new markets than, than are exiting. That's correct. And so we were, we've were we been fortunate for the last couple of years to have more insurance carriers coming back to the marketplace, coming back to healthcare.gov. We did see a little bit of an expansion this year in some of the counties that Family Healthcare Foundation and our partners work in. So in Pasco and Polk counties, they actually do have some new insurance carriers that they didn't have in years past. So that is a little bit of an expansion for us. But we, again, we've been lucky in Florida where we, we're seeing uh, insurance carriers come back into the marketplace to offer more options and to increase competition between insurance carriers, which is really great for consumers. We have a call. We're going to go to the phone lines in just a second here from Greg in Tampa. But I want to remind people that if you're listening live on November 14th, you can give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885 if you have a question for our guest, Katie Roeders-Turner, Executive Director of the Family Healthcare Foundation. Well, let's go now to Greg in Tampa. Yeah, hello. Hi, Greg. Hi. Uh, so so uh, my name is Greg, and I'm, I'm down here in Tampa. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm good, and I'm covered. Like, I, I'm covered because I drive for a living and everything. But... I have this uh, lady friend of mine in Port Ritchie and her son got kicked off of Medicaid like in, in June or uh, what was it? January, February, something like that. And just, she's disabled, but her son has um, down syndrome and like, she, she thinks she got a letter, but I mean, I don't know. She don't have a computer or none of that stuff. And she doesn't know where to go to like actually get this stuff done. I'd, I'd go, I'd go drive her wherever she needs to go. But, you know, they just, like, kick, kick this kid off. I think he's 20-something. He's 20, 20 All right. Thanks, Randy. I'm sorry. Thanks, Greg. Uh, let's let's uh, hear what Katie has to say, and, and I'll keep you on the line just in case there's a follow-up. Sure. Thanks for calling in. We really appreciate the question. And, you know, that, that is a hard situation. If, if the individual who needs coverage is over the age of 19, um, they may not be eligible for Medicaid any longer, just based on eligibility criteria for us here in the state of Florida. We could definitely look at any coverage options for him. And I, I appreciate the offer to drive, but we have navigators up in the Pasco and even Hernando County area. So if you give us a call or have her give us a call, we'd be happy to talk through any option possible. Um, we've got navigators who've been working with us for, or I'm working as navigators for almost this entire 11 years. Um, so they've got a wealth of knowledge and they also come from the communities that they work in. So the navigators up in Pasco and Hernando live in that area um, and would know a lot about community resources. So if you give her our number, 813-995-7005, we'll go through any options that he might be eligible for. We say 995-7005. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just didn't know about these navigators, and she, she's like, I don't know, he doesn't have, he can't even go to the doctor right now. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, he, he has Down syndrome, so, like, you know, I, I, I'd assume that would qualify, and she's on fixed income, too. She's on disability, so. Yeah, if you have her, give us a call. We'll talk through all the possible options and then also share about any community programs or ideas that may help get him access to services. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thanks so Thank much you. for calling in, Greg. And I want to remind people that you can call in with your question or if you have any comments about the health care, uh, the, the marketplace, the Affordable Care Act marketplace of health care coverage, give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can email us at dj at wmnf.org or you can text 813-433-0885 if you're listening live here on the 14th of November. And we're speaking with our guest, Katie Roters Turner, Executive Director of Family Healthcare Foundation. We're talking about the open enrollment period for the Affordable Care Hacks Health Insurance Marketplace here on Tuesday Cafe. And the, the we have a someone who emailed in. Randy in St. Petersburg says, "Will a government shutdown affect the enrollment period negatively?" Great question. Thank you for asking. The answer is no. Uh, no, it is not. Um, so for healthcare.gov, it's operating. It's great. Um, people are able to enroll. So the government shutdown should not impact the enrollment period whatsoever. Um, and I can rec but thank you for asking that because it's an important question. So, uh, the there is federal funding though involved in your um in, in involved in uh paying for your services. Is that right? Or is it all state and local money? So Family Healthcare Foundation um, as an organization is funded by multiple different uh, contracts. Uh, one of them is the uh, federal cooperative agreement to support navigators uh, in um, enrolling people into the marketplace. Um, this is not the first government shutdown or threat of a government shutdown that we've experienced in almost 11 years of uh, working on this project and these programs. Um, and so the guidance that we've shared in the past is that this should not impact any level of services for us. Across the country, there are some state-level policy changes that have affected what coverage some people, some residents are eligible for or how to sign up for or the cost. Has anything changed in Florida over the last 12 months that would make things uh, different than it, they were last year? I believe the, the biggest one is just going to be that Medicaid redetermination that's occurring right now. Um, and then the people who may be, the new people who may be looking for other coverage after having lost Medicaid. That's going to be one of the bigger ones. Um, and then, of course, I can't forget to mention about the changes to the Florida Kid Care subsidized coverage. So uh, last legislative session, um, Florida approved an increase to subsidized coverage for Florida Kid Care. Previously, only families up to 200% of the federal poverty le level were eligible for $15 or $20 a month premiums for their children. As of January 1st, 2024, families up to 300% of the federal poverty level, so that's about $90,000 for a household size of four, could get access to subsidized coverage for all kids in the household. Um, and so that's some really exciting changes. We think we're going to see a lot of families able to access lower cost coverage for their children. So that was actually a huge win. And since we're talking about health care and health insurance, I'm going to get a very quick preview of what might happen in the Florida legislature next session. The session begins in January. And here's a report from a WFSU reporter in Tallahassee, Margie Menzel. She tells us that the Florida Senate has a workshop today to begin to focus on bills that are aimed at expanding access to medical care. So here's that quick report. Senate President Kathleen Pasadomo says the state's health care system will be her focus during the legislative session that starts January 9th. She points to studies showing that by 2035, Florida is projected to have a potential shortfall of nearly 1,800 physicians and more than 3,700 registered nurses. The state also needs more maternity rooms, services for older people, and primary care providers. The Senate Health Policy Committee will hold a workshop Tuesday to begin what Pasadomo calls the Live Healthy effort. For WFSU News, I'm Margie Menzel. So that's a story about health care in general, not specifically about health insurance, marketplace, Affordable Care Act enrollment or anything. But um, I don't know if there's I, I know you would wouldn't want to comment on political questions, Katie. But um, is there anything that you see coming that might come out of Tallahassee come this this spring or um, anything that you're hoping for or what should, should we keep an eye on? Anything like that? 
That's a great question. And I think, you know, the, the emphasis on ensuring that there is um, the provider capacity in the state of Florida is incredibly important. Um, any kind of expansion or re-emphasis um, re on access to healthcare in rural environments, um, making sure that there's enough clinics and medical providers in those areas as well. Um, uh, uh, supporting and continuing to support access to telehealth services is incredibly important too. Um, while we build back up or you know can try to in increase the number of providers in the state of Florida, um, so we're you know really hoping for those types of activities this upcoming year. And we people might be tuning in late; they might have uh, not heard the very beginning of our show. And so uh, Katie Roters Turner is with the Family Healthcare Foundation, and their navigators will help people to get help them pick out a plan through the Obamacare marketplace, the health insurance marketplace. And the way to reach them is the number 813-995-7005, or you can reach them by their website, which is familyhealthcarefdn.org. And if Katie, if someone calls that number or if they go to that website and they set up an appointment with a navigator, what would that appointment with the navigator be like? So if it is a virtual appointment, navigators are going to reach out based on the method that you asked for. So it could either be by setting up a Zoom appointment or via, via by phone. Uh, we'll introduce ourselves. We'll make sure that you're clear on who we are and what we do, which provide unbiased confidential assistance. Um, and then we're going to either help you fill out your application um, if you are just interested in asking questions, if you'd like us to compare plans with you side by side, um, if you need help identifying specialists or providers that are going to be a network or the cost of prescription drugs, we'll do all of that. We'll help you understand whatever documents that have popped up in your inbox for healthcare.gov. And then also, if for some reason you're no longer eligible for subsidies or the cost of what you're looking at is not a great fit for you, we'll make sure to tell you about any other publicly funded programs like a county-based program like Hillsborough County Healthcare Plan or Polk Healthcare Plan, um, or share about information like Florida Kid Care. So we'll screen and assist with any program that's going to get families access to affordable healthcare options. All right, we have a caller from Tampa. I'm going to try to put Jarvis on the line in just a second. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is tell you if you want to call, if you're listening on this the, the 14th of November and you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, give us a call at 813-239-9663. Or you can email us at dj at wmnf.org or you can text 813-433-0885. So Jarvis, you're on the air. What would you like to ask? Yeah, there's some promotion and advertising going around on social media saying that you can get $6,400 from the state and $1,400 a month from the, from the Fed to be put on a flexible spending card. And you can access that through the marketplace. And I want to know what's in the of that. Okay, a flex card? Is that what you're saying? Yes, that you can access $6,400 a month from the state and $1,400 a month from the federal government. And they will put the money on a flexible spending card. All right. Let's see if Katie knows anything about that. Katie? So I I don't know that I could co-sign on that. That that doesn't sound like anything I've heard or any program I've heard of. Now, there is financial assistance through the federal government's advanced premium tax credits, but that doesn't go to an individual. It goes directly to an insurance carrier. Um, I would always encourage everyone, if they're looking for health insurance, try not to click on social media ads, and you're always going to want to go to healthcare.gov because that is the actual government-issued website that's going to show you the correct information based on your income and household size. There is a lot of advertising this time of year. Some of it's not going to be accurate, and some of it might not be in your best interest. So if you really, really, really want to make sure you're getting unbiased information, uh, you are welcome to give us a call, and we'll talk through anything you're seeing or anything you need about health insurance at 813-995-7005. And please know that the healthcare.gov website is going to show the accurate information that you need. Well, Jarvis, was that helpful? Yeah, that's the answer, the answer to the question. I, I thought it was a game anyway. I just wanted to confirm it with her. All right. Thanks, thanks for so calling. Much. 
Thank you. I right, appreciate it, Jarvis. And if you would like to give us a call, it's 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org or you can text 813-433-0885. And earlier, emailer or texter uh, Greg in Tampa says, uh, in response to one of our first emails regarding this uh, healthcare.gov program, Greg is saying, thanks, Obama, thanks, Biden, and thanks, John Mc McCain, for his thumbs down vote. So uh, thanks for that comment there, Greg. And um, I am going to... I'm going to end the show in just a few minutes by reading a, a, from this AP story that's a little bit more about what we were talking about uh, with just uh, just a moment ago when when we heard that AP story about how people are getting wrongly kicked off or um, error-ridden state reviews are purging millions of people from the Medicaid program. But first, I do want to thank our guest. Thanks so much, Katie Roters turner for coming back on WMNF to talk about the open enrollment period. Always such an honor, Sean. Thank you so much for having us. I'm really glad you can come on and I'm sure we'll we'll do this again next year. Looking forward to it. And if people want to find out more, where can they find your information or talk to your navigators? So 813-995-7005. Connect with the navigator in Tampa Bay, Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, and Polk counties. We work in all of them. Or they can go online to our website, www.familyhealthcarefdn.org. Well, thank you so much. Katie Roters Turner, Executive Director of the Family Health Care Foundation. And if you missed any of this interview, all this information is on our website, WMNF.org. And later this afternoon, I'll post a video of this interview so that you can watch that again if you missed any of it. So thanks so much, Katie. And we will see you again soon.